Okay. Um, today I'm going to show you uh, the dangers of exposing an RDP to the internet or even within your own network because as we all know there's still a high percentage of attacks that are happening from the inside rather than from the outside. Um, for this I'm going to use a couple of things. So I'm going to use a tool called Growbar which will help us brute force the server once we have found the server. I'm going to use Metasploit as usual and we're going to use Nmap. So in this case it's a lab environment but I will sh show you at the end also we are show then uh, on the command line how easy it is to actually search for exposed RDP servers in the internet or even with, even with Nmap if you would like to. So basically we start here, we we know we are on a certain network, we know a certain network range, in our case it's a slash 24 network, and we now gonna find servers on that network that have RDP open. So we're gonna use Nmap for this. Um, gonna use Nmap, and yeah, you see I've typed it before, so we're gonna use Nmap for the specific port, and we're gonna hit enter, it will not take very long. There you go. And then we review this, we can see there is at least one very promising target, which is this one. And therefore we're gonna do some more reconnaissance on this one, right? So we're gonna say, um, we're gonna go specific now to this particular IP. Um, we're gonna use the minus S and minus V uh, command line switches here. And that's about it. And we're gonna do some more soul searching here. Let's see. There we go. So now we know uh, it's a Windows server. Uh, it might not exactly be a Windows server 2008, uh, but we know it's a Windows server and we know that the RDP is not only unfiltered, but it's also responding. So now the next step would be we confirm that information uh, via another scanner just to be sure, and we're going to use Metasploit for that. So we start the MSF console as usual. And there we go. And here we're going to use a tool called uh, the auxiliary scanner. So we're going to say use auxiliary and scanner and then RDP, obviously, and then we're going to use the RDP scanner. Uh, we already know now what we're looking for, so we're gonna set the R host here. Sorry, R host with the same IP. Hey, I'm sorry. 192.168.20.144 was the IP. We don't need to set the port on this case because it's already no, known to the tool because we use RDP scanner. And then in this case, we run exploit. In this case, exploit will not really exploit anything yet. It will just show us if that is actually responding there you go detected rdp responding windows version 10 as you can see this is not necessarily accurate it requires nla we have we see that as well so this is not a problem and yeah we can now go ahead and start a brute force attack for which we will use a tool called um proba um proba has a uh in the way we will use it, we, we know the IP now, we know we will try for the administrator user because the administrator user is existing on any any Windows 10, Windows Server, whatever it might be. So there's always a local admin account. So we will know that it's there. And we will use a word list to, to see if we can uh, brute force this with that. And, and also what we will do is uh, we will... Um, um, we, we will, we will, we have set, or not will, but I have set the password to something that is fairly easy to guess, because otherwise it would take maybe a couple of hours for us to get the password. But this will work regardless, even if the password is more complex. Of course, there's certain constellations where it cannot be guessed, but it's a fairly good chance this will work on most RDP servers eventually. Yeah. So um, let's run the. As you, as you can see, I've run that command before, and in this case, we have already specified the, the server with the correct IP and the subnet. I've specified the, uh, the service we're gonna try, which is RDP. I've specified the administrator password, uh, the, sorry, the administrator user account, and a word list. With this, we're gonna hit enter, and it will not take long, and there we have the password. Now, the next step, 
that we have the password, which I admit was really easy, would be to verify that information that we just found. So we're going to uh, stop this one. And now we're going to use a tool called X3 RDP. And as you can see, of course, I have tried that before. So it was already in the history. But nevertheless, it will work. We use uh, X3 RDP with slash U for the username, slash P for the password, slash V for the for the uh, IP address that we're going to connect to. And we do nothing else other than that. We're going to hit Enter. And there you go. We are connected to. Now we will find out what it really is. As you can see, I checked it before. It's the correct server. As you can see, it's the administrator account. And let's run WinWare. OK, it's a Windows Server 2016. I'm administrator now on this server i could now show you i could could log out of this uh, let's say we log completely out uh, we disconnect sorry uh, and we could reconnect to this again at any time uh, there you go connected again we could now repeat reboot that server when it comes back up we will still be able to log in uh, i'm gonna show you this by doing a reboot now. Uh, just say maintenance, unplanned, continue, it will restart. So we will lose connection. In the meantime, I'm going to show you also um, what you can actually do with Shodan. So Shodan, everybody knows Shodan, right? Uh, but Shodan also has a command line interface, obviously, for which you need an API key, which you can get for free with a free Shodan account. And if you look at this search, for example, right? Let's hit end on this one. It will take a little while, but what Shodan does, it will give you a, f it will return to you in a readable format all the open RDP systems. You can modify that search to be specific on on location, country, or whatnot. But just to see how easy it is actually to find those open RDP servers, which makes it much more worrying. That now that you know how easy it can be exploited, as you can see. There you go, lots of them. Then what people usually do, they look for hosting providers who sometimes expose their customers uh, servers unwillingly because the customers don't really know how to secure them. Things like that. It's not a good idea. And then in the meantime, I would assume the server has rebooted. Let's give that a try again. Yep, there we go. Came rebooted it will boot up as you can see fairly easy to exploit now i admit obviously setting the password to something that easy made it faster for us to get the password but you can still get the password even if it's more complex uh, of course you can also say that oh but everybody uses a firewall unfortunately that's not true you will find on shodan a numbers of servers that are openly available unpatched, unsecured, and ready to be exploited. So with this, I hope this was a little bit of use to any to any of you. And um, for the next time, I think I'm going to speak a little bit more about how to exploit Windows 10 workstations uh, by malicious code, malicious files, and then also about how to exploit Android devices fairly easily. With this, I hope you enjoyed this session and uh, until the next time.